Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this um, version of the crocodile stitch. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've already done a version of the crocodile stitch on the loom. It's a little bulkier and it doesn't sit quite as smooth. This one, if you press it and block it, it'll actually lay flat. But as you can see, it has um, a pretty smooth look to it. Now, the basis of this look is actually from um, Christy Davis's uh, video of the drifting petal trim that she did and um, I'm going to have a link of, to that below it's it's a really nice trim and she'll actually she shows it from the right-handed method I'm going to be kind of showing this from a left-handed method and um, it's going to be a little different um, in order to to do this now the other thing to keep in mind and this is not going to be separate like a trim this is all one piece as you can see here it's all one piece these petals are worked in all right well, what you're probably noticing is that your stitch patterning is actually on the inside where the, the, the wrong side would be and your negative side is where the positive side would normally be. Alright, so what you're going to need to know is how to do the pedal and then you're going to need to know how to start and then stagger. Okay, but this is based off of her drifting pedals um, trim that's really beautiful check it out you can um, use that for a number of things but if you are interested in doing this crocodile stitch this is basically based off of that it's not much of a difference okay so for me starting out I'm going to show you how to do a flat panel like this all right um, so starting out what you're going to be doing is um, you're going to be slipping that first stitch, all right, and you're going to cast on, well, and you're up cast on six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, all right. Then you're going to be not touching these original stitches on here, okay? Because you don't want to connect your pedal to your stitches here. This is your backing, all right? That's your that's your fabric there. You don't want to connect those, okay? So pretend like they don't exist and you're just working these stitches, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you're going to be doing a seed stitch for six rows, okay? So your first one is a knit and your second one is a purl okay and basically you're always going to be starting with a um, knit and a purl and you're going to be starting with the peg you finished with so knit and purl okay and knit and purl and because you're doing a seed stitch, you're finishing off of the purl. And you're only working with the stitches you just cast on, okay? At this point, you're going to come back and you're going to do your second round, which is going to be a knit and purl. And you're going to do this for a total of six rounds. And on your last row coming back is... Um, row 7 you're going to e-wrap and then you're going to do a knit to connect the petal to your fabric and I'll explain that okay I had to adjust how um, she connected hers because this is using it in a fabric rather than a trim so um, there are some adjustments but if you've done hers then you should be able to do that and uh, if don't mind my brother He's the one who's yawning in the background. Um, he's bored with me doing tutorials. So there's a lot of noise today, but um, I try to find time when I can. All right, so you're gonna see stitch starting with a knit and purl your way back, okay? And so this is going to be row three. Pearl. 
And then we're going to start on row four. And you're going to, um, now Christy does it where she, um, she does a, uh, e-wrap stitch. So I'm, I'm doing it a little differently. So knit and purl. And knit and purl. And this is row four. And this is row five, starting with that knit. Knit, purl. Knit and purl. Okay, row five. And then this is row six, and we're almost done with our petal, okay? So, you're going to knit and purl. Your way over. Okay, so this is row six, so row seven is where it changes up, and you're finishing up your petal okay so what you want to do after you finish row six is you're going to e-wrap that last peg you finished and then you're going to e-wrap all six pegs and then you're going to um, do what I call a connect okay so there you go so to connect this back to your fabric knit all right then what we want to do to complete is we want to purl like we're going to purl it but we're not going to we're just going to pull that through okay now let's see if i can keep this in now we're going to send these this loop that we've created through all six stitches all right and we're going to do it purl wise and you do want to keep it consistent because when you drawstring it, it will sit consistently. It'll give it a uniform look. All right. And you have one more. Okay. Now, Christy puts a stitch marker in there. I usually, because you have to do this so many times, I just kind of stick my finger in there and take all the stitches off all right and then i'm going to start tugging that and i'm going to put that loop on the stitch that started the e-wrap six okay so you have, should have two stitches there now what i like to do is wrap around that first peg knit it and knit those two together and that completes your petal okay as you can see there is your petal all right and you see it lays kind of flat all right that's how you make the petal now to set up to do the next petal you're going to need to knit over three one two three all right and what you'll find is it should sit in between your middle two but if you're starting out let's say you want to start this pattern out you just do a cast on um, and then you do um, I think let's see I do a cast on and then I do one two three or three rows and then I start okay and I've been doing garter stitch between my rows between my petals okay so to start out do a cast on then do three rows and then start this patterning okay and um so after you finish that you're going to knit three okay and then you'll start the next petal where you e-wrap six okay so one two three four five six okay and then you start again knit one purl one over just those six stitches okay and you're going to do that for six rows so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to complete the petal 
to a point where I'm ready to draw string it on and get it set up to do the next petal. That way you'll be able to see how to just go in and do petals all the way around. And then um, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've gone in and I've done my six rows of seed stitch, as you can see here. Okay, and I'm ready to do my e-wrap over. Okay, so, because that's a complicated spot. So we're going to e-wrap our six. There's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Then you're going to knit the next peg. Okay, that reconnects it. Alright, then at this point you want to take and go behind that peg and you're going to pull through like a pearl to create a loop. Okay. And then you're going to sit there and you're going to pearl wise through each of those loops. Okay. And you're going to do that over all six. Alright. So, you're going to do that over all six. Again, I apologize for the noise. Okay. Now, what I like to do is put my finger through and pull it down. If you want to use the stitch marker like Christy does, go for it. But because I'm having to do this too much and I get a speed going, it slows me down. All right. So then you want to go ahead and take those stitches off, all six, and slowly pull it. And then what I like to do is just put it on there and then put my finger over the top of it and then pull it tight. Okay. Not too tight. I don't try to break the yarn or anything, but there's your petal. Alright. So then you're going to wrap it around the back of that previous peg. You're going to knit that over, and then you're going to knit both those stitches over, all right? And that creates two petals, as you can see. All right, now that you've done that, you're going to knit over three. One, two, three. Then you're going to e-wrap six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So at this point, what you want to do is just continue the petaling. And even when you come over here, you're going to continue to... Um, to do the pedaling even if you're e-wrapping over your starting point which is fine that's not a big deal because you're not touching those original stitches so you're going to continue all the way around as far as you can okay and with this one you're going to be finishing up in here because you can't knit three okay so you get to a point where you can't knit three so the last one will be done right here and you can only knit two all right so you know your last one is going to be right up in here okay and you will do a little bit of overlapping in order to get six in okay so what you want to do is you want to pause the video and complete this row of um petals okay or scales however you want to do that and however you want to call it and then what we'll do is when i come back I'll be right over here at your end peg, and we'll be ready to explain what the next step is. And it's always best to break up your petals, or your scales, or whatever you want to call them, okay? Now, if you kind of get the general gist of this, when you finish your petal row, go ahead and do, um, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five rows of garter. All right, and when you come, when you start to go back, you do pearl, knit, Pearl, knit, pearl. So you're ready to come back. Okay, so you're going to do five rows, um, I think. Yeah, five rows of garter stitch. Okay, if you, if you got this concept, when you finish your petal row, do five rows of garter stitch, and then I'll show you how to stagger the petals, okay? Okay, so... What we've done is we've completed our petals, and it's now time to do our garter stitch area. So what you want to do is you want to slip that first stitch, and you want to pearl your way around. Okay. Now again, if you know the garter stitch, you're going to do it for a total of five rows. So for instance, this is row one. Okay, so you're just going to go 
and purl your way around. Okay, we've reached our way to the beginning and we're ready to do our second row which is going to be a knit stitch. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to slip that first stitch and you're just going to knit your way around. Okay, now keep in mind um, the reason why I'm doing the garter stitch is it kind of keeps the uniformity underneath the scales or petals and the back side of the um, fabric that you're creating here. But um, keep in mind, you can do knit, but do know that what's going to look like under the petals is a purl stitch. If you want it to look like a stockinette, you're going to need to purl every single um, row that's between the scales, okay? And that's going to give you a stockinette. And as you can see, I've been doing garter, and that kind of gives it a neutral effect underneath and that kind of thing, okay? So that's the only reason why I'm doing garter stitch. You can do other stitches if you want, but you need those number of rows in between, okay? So when you're done doing your five rows, you should end with your original starting point, which is over here. So it's a purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, stop, okay? You should have five rows in between your scales, all right? And as you can see, this is what it's, it's looking like, okay? A nice scaled look. Now, um, Deborah Shaw, if you are watching this, I did do an owl eye stitch originally. And um, this is, see if I can get it to focus. There we go. This is the original thing I tried. I don't know why it won't stay focused. Um, I find it curls too much. You can do it. You can do it, but you want to do uh, two less rows if you do the owl eye. Okay, so again, that's the owl eye. These are the seed. Okay, the seed stitch lays flatter. It curls a little bit when you use the owl eye stitch. All right, you can, but it has a different look. Okay, all right. Now, go ahead and pause the video, get your rows done, and then I'll show you how to stagger which is not as difficult as you might think. Staggering is just getting it set up and then working your way through like normal. Okay, we finished our rows, as you can see. I'm sitting in between, okay. And now we're ready to do our stagger. Okay, we started off with the first two, but what you wanna do is act like this is a count of one. Sorry, let me see if I can get that up a little bit more. Okay, you want to count this as one, okay, but it's a count of three, like you've been doing. So one, two, three, okay, and then you'll start. And what you'll notice is, okay, for instance, it was two in between there, and then it was two in between here. You'll notice that you'll have it in between there, okay. So if you follow your line up from your original scale, you're trying to get in between it, okay? But basically what you do is you start off doing a scale almost immediately on the first row. The second row, you knit three, counting that first peg that's normally slipped, you count it, you knit three, then you start over again. So for instance, you want to have knitted over three, so there's one, two, three, then I'm going to e-wrap cast on six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then I'm going to seed stitch for six rows. Okay. When you, you do everything like normal, you do everything like you just did with the first row, the only difference is instead of starting off immediately with a scale, you're going to knit over three. Do a scale, finish that up, knit over three, do a scale. Just like you did with the first row, it's just the um, adjusting it. You're staggering it. So the simple stagger is instead of starting off immediately, you're going to just knit over three. One, two, three. Then you're going to start, okay? And that is how you stagger it. 
it's really not that difficult to stagger. After that point, you continue like you normally do, and you continue as far over as you can. Now, on the second row, I find that typically you can do a um, scale on these last two pegs. So you're going to be wrapping over six over this way, okay? And you're going to end up being able to connect the two stitches there where you wrap it and then, then knit two together. You can do it on these last two, okay? You can do it on the very edge, as you can see here. It's on on the very edge. Sorry. It's on the very edge, all right? So that is how you do the crocodile stitch using um, Christy Davis's drifting petal stitch technique that she came up with and that's how it's adjusted to work onto a crocodile stitch. Keep in mind you're working on the opposite side that normally comes through the loom. Alright and um, when you're done you may notice that you have a spacing in here. You don't have to do anything you can just if you're doing just a panel and you're you're done with it, you don't have to do the garter stitch in between. When you're done with it, you can just do a single row and bind off so that you have a clean edge on one side, okay? So that's kind of how that's done. Again, to stagger, instead of starting off immediately, you're going to knit over three and then start, okay? So it's not that difficult.